Now let's take a deep dive into the tests themselves. To do that, I'm joined by Kim Lanar from Broadcom. Kim, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. Kim, tell us about yourself. What do you do at Broadcom? So I am a performance architect here at Broadcom, and I've been working with them for 15 years uh, in my 22nd year of working in storage performance. So what is the overall theme of what we're looking at in these tests? Why, why are we running these tests to, be, to begin with? Well, when we design these products, we have an idea in mind on how well they're going to perform, but it's really critical that we understand that it is actually uh, able to perform at the expectations that we have for it. So using an independent lab as we have allows us to do that and convey that information to our customers. So let's be very specific about what's actually being tested here. What is the specific hardware that's being tested in this case? What are we looking for? So we're trying to focus a little bit more on the storage uh, component of it, but you, you know the storage doesn't act in a vacuum. So there's a lot of other components that are critical to making sure that the storage runs well. For instance, the PCIe slots, uh, the processing capabilities, as well as the memory. Let's talk about test number one. Tell me what we did in test number one. So the first test was actually focused on transactional database performance. And what we were comparing here was the Dell PowerEdge 740XD to the new PowerEdge 750. And in, this, in the previous generation, our storage controller was actually attached to SATA drives. And in the R750 instantiation, we updated that to NVMe drives. So it clearly shows the advantages of going from a SATA environment to an NVMe environment. Well, let's take a look at some of those results because I want to I want to get your input on exactly what they mean. So I'm seeing increases in new order per minute performance. In one case with 8 drives, we see a 7x increase, with 16 drives a 14x increase. We go to log disk writes and we see a 5.6x increase with eight drives. Going to 16 drives, we see a 13.5x increase. I'm assuming that this would be with two controllers instead of just one going to 16 drives. For log disk reads, a 1.6x increase with eight drives and a 9x increase with 16 drives. Rebuild times, which are obviously important, Going from the 740XD to the 750, with the addition of the RAID card, 4.45x faster. In the 750, 5.25x faster. Kim, what do these numbers mean? And, and why are they important to people who are using server technology? Well, I think we can both agree that those are pretty impressive improvements in performance. And what we're testing here is a TPCC-like benchmark. And it's an industry standard benchmark. It's been around for well over 20 or 30 years even in, in the form that it's in right now. And what that does is it actually shows us what the transactional performance capabilities are of the server. So this is a lot more holistic than just testing the storage because this is actually testing the memory. It's really testing the, the CPU and it's testing the storage too. And one of the reasons why we focused in on the database performance and the log performance is because there are a lot of different components that go together for a SQL based server environment in order to generate good performance. And those are both very critical components, especially the log writes. Especially today, we got to make sure that we have very low latency log writes along with really high performance. Um, and of course, you mentioned the reduction in the rebuild time. So, you know, one of the benefits of RAID is high availability. So your, your storage can keep going even if you have a drive failure. And what this shows is that we can get our customers' databases back online even faster than we could before. So Kim, what does this mean in the real world? What, what, is, what does this performance translate into in terms of things that people care about? Well, I guess the reality is that that translates into more transactions per second from our customers' databases so that our enterprise uh, businesses can actually get more work done. It's really important to make sure that they are able to realize the benefits of the entire system. So by exercising the database, we're actually showing what the entire Dell R750 is capable of doing, especially compared to the previous generations. And it provides an incentive 
and reason for our customers to be able to move up into the newer technologies. Makes sense. So Kim, walk us through test two. What was it all about? So test two was a little bit more focused just on the storage. Unlike test one, where we were testing transactions, test two is really just focusing on the IOPS and the bandwidth capability. Again, we're testing the Dell PowerEdge 740XD and comparing that to the Dell PowerEdge 750. But what is different between these two is the Gen 3 versus the Gen 4 storage infrastructure. So in particular, we're using a Gen 3 PLX switch in the 740XD as opposed to the Gen 4 PLX switch. In both cases, we're testing 24 NVMe drives. What we're doing is just really trying to see how far we can push it. How many IOPS can this system handle? So not only did we scale up the number of drives that we were testing simultaneously, we also scaled up the number of cores that we were testing to see how well that correlated to the end user performance. Well, let's take a look at those results. Test two shows an ability to process more outgoing storage requests, up to 2.1x times the raw IOPS. These are random read tests, and we're looking at up to 12.3 million IOPS from 24 NVMe drives. In the sequential read testing, we're seeing similar gains, up to 2.2x gigabytes per second in concurrent throughput. That's a high number of 53.2 gigabytes per second with 24 NVMe devices. Kim, these are impressive numbers, but what do they actually mean? So what they mean is that the protocol for Gen 4 uh, PCIe is working. It's exactly what we were expecting. And in fact, it's even a little bit more than what we were expecting. We were anticipating a doubling of performance. And where in the in the computer server world, do you see a doubling of performance so easily? Uh, so by using these Gen 4 switches along with these Gen 4 NVMe drives, we're seeing a fantastic, amazing improvement uh, in, the, in the ability to move data within the server. So what does that mean for customers? So for our customers, we all know that you know, data is coming at us faster than it ever was before. We're storing more and more data every single day. So this shows that the ability to actually double the intake capabilities of these servers. Kim, let's talk about test three. First, walk us through the parameters of the test. So it's similar to test two, but what we've done is we've introduced not only NVMe, but we've mixed that up with SAS and SATA drives. Why is it important to test a mix of devices? Well, today's servers, you actually have a, a large choice of drives uh, once upon a time, you really just kind of had one. You had spinning hard drives. Maybe they were SAS, maybe they were SATA. But nowadays, we've added into the mix, we have SATA SSDs, and we have SAS SSDs, and we have NVMEs um, of all different types. And these all have different kind of storage characteristics that fit well with different kinds of applications, such as VDI or you know, different uh, backup or cold storage and things like that. So it allows our customers to kind of mix and mingle the drive types that fit their particular storage needs. Understood. Let's look at the test results. For test three, where we tested a mix of media, we saw a 2.4x increase in random read performance for 4K IOPS when moving from the 740XD to the 750. For random 4K writes, we see about a 1.3x increase in performance. Sequential reads, we see a 2x increase in performance. And finally, for sequential writes, we see a 1.34x increase in performance. So Kim, once again, Help us understand why these numbers matter, especially in the real world context. Well, because in the real world, we actually have a lot of different applications, oftentimes simultaneously running on a single server. So what this shows is the ability to, you know, layer on performance as the applications need it and to be able to do so in a very articulate way where you can add just enough capacity or just enough performance to achieve your targets for your particular uh, environment. Kim, is there an economic factor that's involved when people are deciding whether to run SAS or SATA or NVMe devices? Yeah, there absolutely is. The different kinds of device have different costs 
associated with them. And generally what we talk about is the dollar or the cents per gigabyte, depending on what makes sense. And so being able to design it, I mean, that's one of the most tough things right now for IT administrators is to try and balance the cost with the performance. And this really allows them to fine tune that. So Kim, when we look at all three of these tests together, what's the overall message here? The overall message is that we understand that it's very difficult for our customers to try and balance their performance requirements with their costs, especially with today's budget. So what this shows is that you can double your performance just by going from Gen 3 to Gen 4 in the new Dell R750 architecture. So it's a big benefit for our customers. So is it fair to say, Kim, that hardware matters? Hardware absolutely matters. It is absolutely critical in the decision making that goes into trying to design your servers for your particular environment. Kim, thanks for helping us understand these test results. Well, thank you so much for having me.